Hi everyone and um, welcome back to our channel. If you're new to our channel, we are Refeather Your Nest and this is series two of Ask Our Design Professionals. Um, my name is Michelle Ganella and I'm in New Jersey and with me today I have... Karen Casella who is also in New Jersey, hello. And I'm Susan Hayes from Florida. Nice to see you guys. Hi guys. Hi. So, um, um, so I'm going to start off uh, this week and I'm going, the question that I received was about a specific question in a room and I will address that. The other questions that we received are um, more um, room specific. So there's not like a overall topic we're talking about. There are specific questions that we got in today's series. So my question was, I'm going to, I, I received a picture. So I'm gonna to try to share my screen right now. So this is the picture that I received. And the question is, in my bedroom, I have two windows at 90 degrees angles with each other. They are kind of short and high up on the wall. What kind of window treatments do you uh, recommend? So um, great question. So the first thing that I would suggest, since it's a master bedroom, you wanna make sure that it's something that is, um, that's gonna provide you with privacy and light control because you wanna be able to sleep. So my ideal situation, given the height of those windows and where they are in the room is, I would recommend doing a, a fabric room in shade. Um, that's something that is made from a workroom, typically, and you can line it with a blackout liner. That way you're making sure that, you know, none of the light comes through. And the reason why I love that idea is that you can bring in your own personality in the room. You can use a fabric, like one that I have right here. This is like a new fabric that I just received. I absolutely love it. Love the color that's got texture to it and um, the design as well. Um, so, um, and you can actually have the shade, have a top down bottom up functionality so that you can have privacy lower the shade, let some light in, and still have privacy when you're in your bedroom and walk around. Or you can also, when you pull up that shade to the very top of the window, I'm gonna to try to see if I can give you a little sample of what it would look like. At the very top of the window, you can have something that looks kind of like a valance that sits at the very top of the window. So it's also a decorative accent on the window when it's all the way pulled up. Um, those are, do you guys have any questions about any of that? No, but I do love a Roman shade because it's so streamlined looking. Yeah. And I think the, 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 the um, plethora of fabric choices that you have uh, available is, is just amazing. So you can really suit any room. Yeah. So are there different styles of Roman shade? I'm sorry, Susan, I can't hear you. <laughs> styles of Roman shade? Oh yeah, awesome question. Yes, there are. So um, so you can do a flat Roman shade uh, and a flat Roman shade is just what it sounds like. It's basically fabric that's straight. And with something like this, when you have this kind of pattern on your fabric, I would suggest you do a flat Roman shade. It, it, it's sewn with um, grommets in the back of it so that when it's pulled up, it gives you that pleating look when it's pulled up. But when it's down covering the window, it's flat like this. Um, the other um, style is called a hobbled Roman shade or a waterfall, which kind of has a billowing kind of effect. So you have fabric, it's, it uses more fabric, it's fuller, and it kind of comes down and billows out, which is why it's called a waterfall. Um, another style is called a pleated Roman shade. And in a pleated Roman shade, what they do is they tack the back of the the shade so that the pleat is to the back so you don't see it and it gives a flat look but as you can see by what I'm doing right here it kind of distorts the pattern when you do that so I wouldn't suggest doing something like this with a patterned fabric like this so you want to do something uh, on a planar fabric if you're using it and maybe you can do tape decorative tape on the sides of the um, shade when you did a style like that um, there's also a front pleat uh, which I'm not a big fan about, but um, of, I should say, but there's some people that really like it. it. The pleat is in the front of the shade. So you have like a little line in the center. Again, um, it doesn't distort the pattern as much as the back pleat um, or the waterfall, but um, it still does distort it a little bit. Um, and there's, you know, there's a lot of other fabric um, styles, but those are the most um, popular, I would say. So the other option for that room, instead of a Roman shade, is um, you can put 
um, take those, the, the curtain rods that are on the top of that window off and take down the small little mini blinds that are on the, sh on the window. And you can um, replace those mini blinds with a faux wood blind, um, especially if you're doing a painted blind. You know, you can do anything like, you know, a, a larger slat is better because that's more current looking, um, or your primary treatment could be something like a uh, blackout roller shade. If you can see the texture on this one, it's kind of pretty. Um, again, it's a blackout, or you can do a um, woven natural Roman shade, which is something like this. But I, again, in this instance, I would line it with a blackout liner. So those would be your choices or some of your choices for your primary treatments. And then to soften it up, because it is a master bedroom, I would flank both of those pairs of windows with um, um, drapery panels, mounting the rods, finials, and uh, brackets and um, rings all at the highest point that you can mount them. That way it brings the height of the window up and it doesn't make it look as short as it is. Um, it, and it kind of distracts the fact that they're, they're in the corner like that. It kind of, it, it gives a new focal point to the space. So. Yeah. It'll also um, elongate the room. It'll yes. elongate the height of the room in general. Yep, it makes your eye, when you're in a room, your eye goes to the highest point in the room so that when you do mount those window treatments um, high in the space, it actually brings your eye to it, which, which gives the room feeling like it has a, a higher um, ceiling line as well. So great point, Karen, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so that's all I had. Um, next up is uh, Karen. So uh, we received another question. It said, in general, how do you determine how to set up a room? So I'm just gonna touch on a few points. There's so many ways to set up a room for, for different rooms and for different purposes. Um, we will start with just a general rule of thumb is that for any room, any space, even a bathroom, you want to make sure that you have a focal point. Uh, one wall should have your focal point. You can have other subtle focal points in a room, but you really want to draw your eye to the most attractive thing uh, that there is in the room when you first walk in. So for instance, a living room, you, your focal point might be a fireplace and the fireplace wall, whether you have built-ins on either side and you're accessorizing them. Um, if you don't have a fireplace in a living room, if you have a large wall, you may want to put your sofa against, against the large wall and then um, put a beautiful piece of artwork or a mirror over it. Sometimes um, when you walk into a living room, you have your largest wall and it has a window on it. And then you would do beautiful window treatments as maybe your focal point. Um, and then your focal point would also become you're kind of framing the outdoors um, and that you, the outdoors is the best art you could, you could have in most cases. If you're talking about a bedroom, you want your focal point to be most likely the bed. If your window placement in your bedroom allows for that, um, it's, it's, it's nothing like walking in and seeing the bed ahead of you with a beautiful headboard or beautiful pillows. Um, that is the most attractive um, Michelle, I know you had mentioned uh, when we talked earlier that you had a client with um, a oh, fireplace. Fireplace, a fireplace yeah. in the bedroom. Oh my God, so gorgeous. So it, that, those kind of rooms are really uh, beautiful to, to work with, right? Because now you, you have the fireplace too and you want to situate your bed right across from it so that you can cozy up to that at night. How awesome is that? Yeah. <laughs> So in, in that case, you would put your bed across from the fireplace because you want your fireplace to be the focal point. Even in a bathroom, your focal point could be a beautiful vanity mirror over um, your, your sink area with sconces on the side. And in a kitchen, you may want to have your focal point be your hood range mm -hmm. or your tile backsplash. So that's basically one way to uh, set up a room is you always want to have a focal point in the room. Uh, secondly, is furniture placement is so important. In a living room especially, you know, you're, you're in a living room or a gathering room to gather and to have conversation and to talk, hopefully, I think by the time this is over, we're all gonna <laughs> be ready to get rid of our families. But you wanna make sure that whatever you set up your seating, you're not more than four to six, maybe eight tops feet away. Um, I don't know about you ladies, but the biggest mistake that I see there's these grand rooms 
Yeah, and we're screaming because <laughs> everyone pushes their furniture all the way up against the side of the room and it's not necessary. Really think about where you could utilize floating furniture in a space. So you may have a sofa against a large wall, but maybe you could float the two chairs across from it. Yeah, and actually, Karen, also, like, it doesn't, you don't have to have a huge room to float furniture. That's true. Right. right. Yeah. So that's why I'm giving kind of um, um, a, a feat as, as a rule of thumb. So you, it, anywhere that you're sitting, even in a dining room, two ends, could you could be shouting across the dining room. So you just want to make it cozy and, and functional in that way. Um, you also want to make sure you have a U-shaped seating area if, if your room allows, if you have the space. And what I mean by that, you may have a sofa, two chairs across, and maybe a settee or a love seat. Um, but U-shape is preferable uh, if you have the space to do that. In a bedroom, you just want to make sure that, again, you have your focal point in your bedroom and you have enough walking space around your bed. Another way to... Uh, set up a room is by using your area rugs. So if you have hardwood flooring or tile flooring, you want to throw down an area rug. It kind of anchors the furnishings in that space. And for instance, in a living room, you want to make sure that your the front feet of your furniture are placed on the area rug. And that's how you're going to know what size area rug to get. Um, of course, your cocktail table will, will be fully on the area rug. Mm -hmm. um, the last tip, Susan, did you have something to say? Yeah, I've seen that um, for a while people were doubling on rugs, area rugs, um, using layers. Um, like if they had carpet, they wanted to put in an area rug. Are you still seeing that? I, I'm not seeing that anymore, but I was wondering if you're still seeing it, um, oh. putting in an area rug. I saw it. Look at Michelle and I cringing. I saw it. Um, I saw it with someone and I, I softly, gently nudge them to it's either one or the other. Do not layer your, your rugs. If you have a wall-to-wall -wall carpeting, keep your wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. Um, and you know, if you don't, if you have tile or wood flooring, then uh, you can put down an area rug, but layering is, is not really a great idea. Right, ladies? <laughs> there, was, there was a time period that it, it, it was in all the magazines. They were you know, double, but it, for functionality purpose, it, it, it's danger, it can be dangerous as well as it just, it, it doesn't make sense. Right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, for the, for the, a lot of people that have, I'm not even going to say elderly, because there could be some younger people too that have um, walking disabilities or what have you, it's a huge trip hazard. So, so yeah, it's not a, a great thing. Stay away, no layering of rugs. Yeah, we'll stay away from that. Yeah. Um, the third thing I want to talk about uh, in room setup is you can really use lighting. So we focus on three different types of lighting. It's your overhead lighting, which would be your recess lighting, or if you have a ceiling light in a bedroom, um, which is important just for, for function of, of seeing your space. Second would be task lighting. So you could set up areas of room. Obviously, if you have a desk somewhere, you want a little light on your desk. If you want a space in your living room just for reading, you could put a floor lamp or a table and a, and a table lamp on, on top of the table next to it to create a little, a little nook. And then there's ambient lighting. Ambient lighting is used when it could cast some shadows and just add, it's exactly what it is, add ambiance to a room. And a great example of that is if that you have a buffet or server in your dining room, you can always add table lamps on that just to create a little ambiance. So there's different ways to set up a room, but those are some of the basic things that we all work with um, to try to make a, a space look functional and aesthetically pleasing. Thanks, and that's Karen. really all I have, unless someone else has something to add. No, I Thank think you. you pretty much covered it. Thanks, Karen. Yeah. Um, Susan, how about you? Let's um, go to you. The topic that I was um, uh, asked to talk about is um, a really fun topic. It's uh, tips on introducing feminine and masculine vibes in a living room space. So I love that designing for the sexy type of thing. Because <laughs> a lot of times, um, and I, I know um, Michelle and Karen, you um, probably see this as well. We only meet with one person in the household. And predominantly, that is, is a female. Um, so we, um, we only get one perspective. So, um, so it's very important that when you want to add um, feminine and masculine vibes in a space, that there's a conversation. And the two most important things to look at 
when you're um, wanting to add these touches and create a loom that's um, appealing and pleasing to both parties that are going to be using the room as well as a universal feel when you have guests over and um, want to enjoy your living room is color and texture. Uh, it's very important. So have a discussion about your existing color palette. Do you both like it? Uh, do you, if you don't like it, come up with um, colors that you like and colors that they like and um, maybe you start all over with your color palette. Um, a combination, there's some great, uh, say you like uh, blue and the, the person um, that you're creating the room with um, does not like blue, but likes grays. There's some beautiful undertones, grays with undertones of blue that you can use that are appeal would be appealing to both of you. And um, the same with uh, like taupes, um, uh, there, there's a color, there's colors called grayish. Uh, or grige. I'm not really sure how to say it. Some people say grige and some people say grige, but it's a combination of beiges and browns or um, neutral with a touch of, um, of gray in it. You can have a gray and beige. Uh, it's, it's, it's a combination and that may be appealing to uh, both of you, but it's very important to um, make sure that you're on the same page with the colors in the room that you, um, that you can work off of to add those feminine and uh, masculine touches. Because we all know when you, you know, there's specific colors that, you know, pinks that um, are for girls and blues are for boys. You know, it's just the way we raise. But you, you see now when you're doing the nursery and you don't know what the, um, the sex is going to be, you can use neutral colors and bring in colors like yellows and grays and um, even some browns, that type of thing. You don't have to go with pinks and blues, or you can add touches and still keep it a, a masculine room or a feminine room. So feeding off of that, how do you add these feminine and masculine touches? And uh, one great way is through textures. Michelle shows the fabric. Do you want to hold it up again, Michelle? I love, so it's the, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, it has grays in it, but there's there's some taupe in there. There's there's pattern. Geometric patterns are usually considered masculine. Same with um, tex, uh, textured fabrics. Uh, there's houndstooth. There's uh, there's um, uh, let's see plaids, stripes. All these types of things are are um, textured types of fabrics. You can add color to th those that are more soft and feminine. A great example that I'd like to share with you is a lot of times we go into a space and the, the living room space is where you watch TV and um, they want comfort. So they have a really large leather sectional or you have some leather furniture that you, you know, absolutely love. And leather furniture is usually bigger in um, size and um, it's, it's darker and it, it, it casts a, a heavier feel to a room. And how can you add a little, some feminine touches to that without destroying the, the classic look of leather? Um, one of the great things that have come out recently and been very popular are the faux furs. Uh, you can do the faux, that's a, that's a texture there. Look at the, Michelle has one right on hand and that you're sitting in your living room. Love right? it. Yeah. Love it. Um, you can, and it was this very soft pastel color. Picture that onto the, the uh, onto a, a charcoal leather um, sectional or a, a black sectional. It, it will lighten up the mood. It will add a feminine touch without going too far that um, someone would say, oh, you know, this is a, this is a she shed type of, uh, type of room. So you want to uh, make sure that, that the things that you're adding are colors that you're both comfortable with, but also um, that you don't uh, um, over um, do the feminine or the masculine. Uh, you want to have a balance. Uh, other things that you can do are so many fabrics now, um, classic fabrics are um, you know, traditional and um, sometimes considered masculine, like I um, mentioned, like a houndstooth. Um, they now make it in blues and grays. They, you can um, do uh, an ottoman in the um, midst of, um, say you have 
cream color or white sofas and you have some floral pillows, you could put a beautiful houndstooth um, ottoman in the center of that scenario that adds some masculinity to it, but in like a um, blue and gray colors, the, the fabrics in, in a soft blue and gray. Uh, there's just, there's so many things. You could uh, take a, a neutral palette and add pops of color. Say uh, you both like the a navy color. Uh, why not, if you, if you didn't feel comfortable putting it on the walls, of the room and making the room a dark color um, with light, um, with a white furniture or a, a cream, creamy neutral uh, furniture. Keep your walls neutral and add it to the ceiling. You can, you know, put uh, put a pop of, of um, uh, navy onto the ceiling, and all of a sudden, the masculine part of the family will come in and, and notice, say, "What's going on in this room?" It, it's because you added you added a pop of color and um i i we just did a, a dining room and the husband travels a lot and the first thing he did when he came home goes boy the dining room looks great what did you do and it was we added navy to the ceiling and he he's never said anything before on all the beautiful new furniture and that type of thing <laughs> but he did the navy ceiling so pops pops of color um through pillows uh, geometric um, patterns are very good. Add an area rug. Um, you can do the, the shags out there that they're still in, um, you know, in, in uh, on point um, to soften the space. If you, you don't want to put down a, a traditional or a very contemporary rug, you can uh, soften the space with a, a shag, maybe with a geometric pattern on there for not taking it too uh, feminine. So you know, look at look at your space. Talk about what's going on in there, and add your fem, feminine, uh, feminine and masculine touches by um, by uh, by textures and the color tones of the fabrics and accessories and artwork as well. Yeah, and remember, we have we're going to be brushing up, or I shouldn't say we're brushing up, but I feel like there are times when we're walking into the room trying to incorporate the feminine and masculine in a room, we become um, psychologists too. So <laughs> work with us people. <laughs> Realize um, what, what's been bothering somebody for a long time and um, nobody knew it. So, um, so it's, it's fun. It, it's, um, communication is very key to design. Yep, yep. Yeah, thanks, thanks Susan. Um, anyone else have any questions? Are we good? Okay, well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this week. And um, be sure to check out, out our YouTube channel and subscribe because we'll be posting um, new videos, um, hopefully um, in the upcoming weeks, and answering your questions. And if you have more questions, please keep them coming in so we'll have more material to cover um, on a weekly basis. And, and remember- don't, And don't forget to post pictures. If you have specific questions with pictures, um, it's so much easier for us to address. So feel free to um, post some pictures and uh, we'd like to see those, our suggestions um, come to fruition when you make those changes that we suggest. Yes, absolutely. So thank you all. Remember it's time to renew, refresh, refeather your nest. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.